That was actually really comfortable. <laughs> People are climbing into devices like this one in search of shorter recovery times and to live longer, healthier lives. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT, has gone from niche medical treatment in hospitals to a wellness trend that wealthy athletes, celebrities, and biohackers are opening their wallets to try. The chambers are pressurized so you breathe in more oxygen with the goal of making your body more efficient. So does oxygen therapy actually work? And does it live up to the hype? See you soon. Oxygen therapy is going mainstream. Everything from oxygen bars to portable inhalers, fancy spas, and at-home chambers. The chambers come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and price tags. The increased demand comes thanks to tantalizing papers like this one. The study looks at the health benefits of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, or HBOT. We are actually taking the biology back in time. Hyperbaric just means higher pressure than normal. In the study, there were two key findings that suggested that some signs of aging had been reversed. Longer telomeres and a reduction of malfunctioning cells. Telomeres are like molecular safety helmets for DNA. And as our cells age and divide, these caps get shorter, compromising the stability of genes, which makes for unstable cells. And those unstable cells are more prone to turn cancerous or die. In Shai's study, participants spend 90 minutes in chambers like this one, every day for 60 days. And his team found that the proportion of malfunctioning immune system cells went down by a few percentage points after treatment compared to before. That's important because as we age, our cognitive abilities, heart health, and the ability to fight infections decline. In part because the cells which make up our organs start to get sick and die. Age-related functional decline. This is the biggest hazard that our society have. But Shai said his findings are specific to the way he conducted his study. With that in mind, I went to a different clinic in New Jersey to check out how other HBOT treatments work. So here, this is our hyperbaric area, an environment of increased pressure and an environment of increased oxygen. Oxygen is a critical nutrient that keeps our cells and our bodies running. The air we breathe is about 20% oxygen, whether you're at sea level or high altitudes. But the higher you go, the less pressure there is, and the more dispersed the oxygen molecules become. A hyperbaric chamber uses pressure to compress air, similar to what happens when you fly. An airplane is basically a giant hyperbaric chamber, right? It's a pressurized cabin. To show that compression, Jason got into a chamber with an inflated balloon. As the pressure went up, the balloon shrank. The air and the oxygen it contained was being concentrated. So if I were actually doing this session, I would mask up and then you would close the door for me? Yep. Okay. Most oxygen chambers in hospitals go up to about two to three times the pressure at sea level. The person then breathes through masks like these. Instead of the 20% in normal air, the mask delivers 100% oxygen from these tanks. Shai told me that together with the high pressure in the tank, the mask helps deliver 16 times as much oxygen into the blood and then to the muscles and organs. That increases the amount of oxygen available to fuel the body. Compared to the 1970s, there's now a lot more hospitals providing HBOT. But using hyperbaric oxygen therapeutically goes back more than 100 years, with doctors trying to help divers get over the bends, aka decompression sickness. This happens when divers come up to the surface too fast. To show what that might look like, Jason blew up a second balloon while he was in the chamber at high pressure. Now, imagine your lungs are the balloon as the chamber returns to sea level. In worst case scenario, your lungs could Right now, there are only 13 other scenarios where insurance will pay for HBOT. And those are also the only ones you'd be able to get treated for at a hospital. At the cellular level, higher oxygen intake increases oxygen delivery to deprived areas when someone has the bends. It also helps prevent further damage by reducing inflammation and hopefully speed up the healing process. In animal studies, hyperbaric oxygen therapy increased the growth of new blood vessels. And some of Shai's work shows similar effects in humans. Results like these, plus all the social media hype, have made oxygen therapy super popular. People are installing tanks in their homes or going to clinics seeking the health benefits I mentioned earlier. So we have three hard chambers where we're using hyperbaric oxygen to help improve healing and recovery and regeneration for all kinds of different patients. Obviously there's a door, these valves give us basically the pressure that we're gonna be going to. That gauge is what tells us where we are. Okay. And then these are just tools to control the flow of oxygen, okay. the flow of air coming in and out. Clinics can administer HBOT off-label, meaning at a clinician's discretion. That's not regulated by the FDA. The treatment also varies from location to location, depending on the equipment and the amount of pressure that's used. In Jason's chamber, patients breathe in 100% oxygen continuously. 
At Shai's The Thief clinics, they take off the mask every couple of minutes. He says that tricks the body into thinking it's starved for oxygen. Meaning all the repair mechanisms are starting to be activated. And that's supposed to build your body's resilience toward aging. It's unclear whether and under what conditions HBOT has lasting effects. The truth is, a lot of the questions people ask, the answer is, we don't know yet. As with any procedure, HBOT carries known risks. Medical doctors I spoke to said that people who have epilepsy, COPD, or emphysema shouldn't use hyperbaric oxygen therapy at very high pressures because it could be dangerous. There are also less serious side effects like temporary vision changes, lightheadedness, claustrophobia, vomiting, and ear damage. Soft chambers people install at home are pumped with room air, so the quality of the air you breathe is harder to track. Experts say that most heart chambers are installed in hospitals and clinics, but there have been reports of heart chambers exploding in people's homes. In these videos, I usually try out these therapies for myself, but after talking to my doctor, I decided against it. But if you decide to try it, make sure to speak to a trained medical professional before getting into any chamber. If you want to treat yourself, do it right. Don't play. The overarching advice I got was, don't try this at home, especially by yourself. <laughs>